serology plays a big role in diagnosing hepatitis B, but the interpretation of the results can be quite tricky. This is the hepatitis B virus. You can see the outer surface, which is known as the hepatitis B surface antigen. Then inside we have the core, giving the hepatitis B core antigen. Antibodies can form against either of these, so we can have anti-hepatitis B surface antigen antibodies and anti-hepatitis B core antigen antibodies. The anti-hepatitis B core antibodies can be split into the IgM antibodies and the total antibodies. This is important in determining the time frame of the infection, since IgM is the first one formed. These are the main markers that are used when diagnosing hepatitis B. We can also use the hepatitis B E antigen, which exists between the envelope and the core of the virus, as well as antibodies against this hepatitis E antigen. The level of hepatitis B E antigen correlates with the infectivity of the person carrying hepatitis B. It also correlates with the activity of viral replication. Presence of anti-hepatitis B E antigen antibodies indicate inactivity of the virus and low infectivity. So based on these, we have several possible scenarios. A patient who is negative for the hepatitis B surface antigen, the anti-hepatitis B surface antibody, and anti-hepatitis B core antigen is considered susceptible to the virus, while patients with a negative hepatitis B surface antigen, a positive anti-HBS, and a negative anti-hepatitis B core is considered immune due to having had the hepatitis B vaccine. Presence of anti-hepatitis B surface antibodies shows immunity. Patients who have both the anti-hepatitis B surface and anti-hepatitis B core antibodies are immune, but are naturally immune due to having had the disease and subsequently cleared it. Now let's look at the acute and chronically affected scenarios. Patients with a positive hepatitis B surface antigen, IgM anti-hepatitis B core, and negative anti-hepatitis B surface are patients who are acutely infected. On the other hand, patients with hepatitis B S antigen positive, anti-HBC positive, negative IgM anti-HBC, and negative anti-hepatitis B surface antibodies are chronically infected patients. Some people will show a negative hepatitis B surface antigen, a negative anti-hepatitis B surface antibody, but a positive anti-hepatitis B core antibody. In this case, the interpretation is unclear, but the possibilities include a resolved infection, a false positive anti-hepatitis B core antibody, a low-level chronic infection, or a resolving acute infection. This is a graph showing the typical serology for a person contracting and clearing hepatitis B. You see initially the hepatitis B surface antigen rising, followed soon after by an increase in the IgM anti-hepatitis core antibodies and the total anti-hepatitis B core antibodies. Then we see the hepatitis B surface antigen level drop, as well as the IgM anti-hepatitis B core antibody levels, followed then by the formation of the anti-hepatitis B surface antigen antibody, which shows immunity. We also see that the hepatitis B E antigen is present for only a few weeks, before the anti-hepatitis B E antibody is formed. This graph shows the progression of chronically infected patients, the main difference being that the hepatitis B surface antigen level remains high and no anti-hepatitis B surface antibodies form. Also note how much longer the hepatitis B E antigen is present.